the test we can use to estimate if our dough is ready to bake is quite simple. It is said that we just need to poke the dough and see its reaction. If the surface slowly bounces back and leaves a little trace, then the dough is ready. But this is not enough. We need to look for other elements too. And I will tell you about that as well. I prepared three doubles. They are a different stages of proofing. You will see one that is ready to bake. The other is not ready yet. Actually, it's really early. Why the last one, guess what, will be over fermented. It will be better to fix it before using it. Now, why is it necessary to get the dough at the right point, at the right fermentation time? Well, to make it super simple, when we say that the dough is ready, we refer to a balance between the amount of gas produced by the yeast that makes the dough puff up and the strength of the gluten we built during kneading. So, if the dough is thunderproofed, there is not enough gas inside it and this leads to a dense texture. Perfectly edible, but not too pleasant when we chew it. On the other hand, when the dough is overproofed, the gluten has lost its strength. You will see the consequences in a minute. In fact, I'm going to show you my bots right now. Let me show you my dough bolts now, so you can have a clear visual reference. Okay, these are my three dough bolts. This one in the middle is ready to bake. Like I said, the test is quite easy. Uh, so let me set aside the other two that I will show you in a second. And uh, let's do the test. We have to poke it with a finger. You can either use a bit of flour or maybe some water to prevent sticking. Uh, I'm gonna use some oil here. Let's push around one centimeter or so. What happens now? The dough must spring back, but not completely. A little trace should remain. The dough bounces back slowly, several seconds will pass. The logic behind this is that because time has passed, the gluten is now weaker, but it doesn't reach its breaking point yet. In fact, it's still able to contain, to hold all the gas inside. This gas is what is basically pushing back the gluten mesh to its original position. The longer we wait, the less noticeable the trace will be, because the gas inside will continue to push up. Not sure if it's noticeable on video, but I can tell that the trace is already less deep. Let's continue the test. I leave this here so you can have a look from time to time. Now, this double is not ready yet. I made it around uh, one hour and a half ago, more or less. So, what happens if I push the surface? Will it bounce back? Think about what's happening inside the dough. So far, the gluten has just relaxed, no clear decay. About gas development, uh, for now, there is little to none. At the moment, the yeast is too busy duplicating itself. I mean, over time, even here, the trace will disappear, but we're talking minutes. Uh, basically, in the meantime, the yeast starts producing gas. Now, I don't want you to think that you have to stay there with a stopwatch to understand if the dough is ready to bake or not. There are other clues. And this is why at the beginning of the video, I said that the poke test alone is not enough. So where is the real difference? Here is the real difference. Can you see it? The size of the double is definitely different. This one is underproofed, this one is ready to bake. The ready double is bigger, definitely bigger. We all know that the dough rises, right? Most say that it should double the size. I heard someone say that the size should be triple. And finally, according to another school of thought, the size should be one and a half. If you ask me, my answer will be, I don't know, I don't care. The double for me, for my standard, for the outcome I want, is ready. Has it doubled the size? Triple? It really doesn't matter. To me, I don't want to make pizza making too much mechanical. There is plenty of feeling involved and, and love, of course. The truth is, to each their own. There is no right or wrong as long as there is a fair amount of growth. 
uh, allow me to set the question and say that the double is ready when its size is in a range one and a half to three times the initial size. Now it's time to test the last double of fermented. But first, if you made it this far, you might want to hit the thumbs up so hopefully more people will see this video. Now, I took this dough to an stream. It's as big as the container. It's really sticky. Poof. Here is how a no fermented dough looks like. It's really sticky because over time the chemical bonds uh, between the proteins that form the gluten break down and uh, molecules of water are released. Uh, but I don't want to bore you with geeky notion, you know I almost never do. I would do the test, although this dough doesn't really need it. Let's pop it. Now this trace will remain here <laughs> like forever. Uh, like I said, the gluten cannot possibly push up enough because it's now too weak. And for the same reason, it's struggling to hold the gas inside. Some of the gas that was already produced will just escape. The dough is deflating, as you can see, just because I touched it. Now, this is important. There is not a universal time threshold. The time beyond which the dough becomes overproofed is different from dough to dough and depends on several factors. Temperature, in general, is key. The last double is overproof despite coming from the same batch as the good one. But I didn't use the fridge for it. I left it at room temperature. It was around 24 degrees, of course a bit lower during night. Another important element is the flour. As a rule of thumb, the higher the protein content, the longer you can proof your dough. More proteins means stronger flour. You often see the denomination strong on the bags of flour you see in the supermarket. If I use the weak flour, let's say below 10% protein content for reference, even using the fridge, the gluten will start to rip earlier and the result will not be too good. But back to this overproof double. Remember that this is perfectly edible, maybe with a sour aftertaste. The only real problem is that it's hard to handle because it's really weak. If you're careful, you can still make pizza with it, but you need to gain some experience first. In the meantime, please subscribe to my channel and make your life easier following the procedure I show in this video.